Hi right, everyone, Cody here. Now you may notice if you watch my channel that my friend Arthur and I have put out a video about depleting potassium of its radioactive isotope. That's not what this video is going to be about because I can't show you the process yet. Mostly because it's secret and also because I got a lot of bugs to work out. Now this video is going to be about heavy water, specifically making it at home. Now I did a YouTube search a while ago and I haven't found any YouTube videos of anyone doing it. And to my knowledge, I don't think anyone has on a small scale. It's all done commercially. Of course, I know that it's been separated on a home on a scale that I could do before. The, the first isolation of it was done by some guys in a school lab. I could totally do that. So I don't understand why nobody has done it, but I'll certainly fulfill the niche. Now I'm going to be producing a small amount of deuterium. Uh, there's, there's no way I'm going to make liters of it at a time. That would, well, maybe eventually. I mean, there's a lot of uses for it. Its uh, main use is for use in nuclear reactors, and I'd love to build one eventually, but not for a while. No, right now, if I have a couple milliliters of deuterium oxide, I might be able to separate the oxygen through electrolysis and make deuterium gas and uh, inject it into a fuser reactor, you know, electric grids, they accelerate the ions at each other, fuse them together, make neutrons. There's all kinds of experiments I could do, and it only needs a couple milliliters of deuterium oxide, heavy water. I think that's something I could totally do. Now I'm going to be using the same process that was first used to isolate heavy water, and that is electrolysis. You see, in electrolysis, you have two electrodes in a solution containing water and an ionic salt, which makes the water electrically conductive. The electrons are pulled into the positive electrode. This uh, causes the uh, water molecule to ionize and uh, split apart, releasing the hydrogen ions. Well, oxygen ions as well, but we're going to ignore those for a little while. The hydrogen ions then jump from uh, water molecule to water molecule. As they go through the solution, they're going to run into other water molecules, ionize it as well. Basically like billiards, it's going to come on and it's going to knock off another ion or bounce off itself. And it's going to make its way through the solution to the other electrode, the negative electrode, where the hydrogen ions will gain electro electrons, turn back into a neutral hydrogen atom, combine with another hydrogen atom, and bubble out a solution. Now, uh, I've thrown the word deuterium around quite a bit here. The deuterium is basically hydrogen, but with an extra neutron in its nucleus. See, hydrogen is made up of a proton, which is why it's sometimes called protium. Now, uh, you add a neutron to that proton, it's not going to change its reactivity very much at all. It just adds mass. In fact, the neutron weighs about as much as the proton does. And with one more neutron on there, we call it deuterium. It comes from the word uh, two or whatever. You also got tritium, which has two neutrons, which makes it really heavy, also radioactive. Anyway, just like if you have a heavy ball and a light ball, and you give them both the same kick, the light ball is going to go much further than the heavy ball. So in electrolysis, the uh, lighter balls, you give it the electrical kick, are going to fly off more easily than the heavier deuterium ball. Also, as it's going through the solution, when it's running into other water molecules, the uh, deuterium is going to be less likely to get knocked off again, and it's going to be more likely to just stick to the water molecule. Because it's, uh, it's heavy, it's harder to move around. In fact, the electrolysis, you're going to have about 5 to 10 times less deuterium in the hydrogen gas that bubbles out as you're going to have stuck in the solution. It's a great way to separate the hydrogen isotopes. Unfortunately, there exists only about one deuterium atom for every 4,000 or so normal hydrogen atoms, which means I'm going to have to go through like a gallon and a half of water to acquire just a single gram of heavy water. It's going to take a lot of energy to boil down, to uh, electrolyze down that water, but I have a little shortcut. I'm going to show that to, to you shortly. And here is my shortcut. See that? A big bank of lead acid batteries. Now they are being charged by the solar panels currently. I've got about a hundred amps of current going into them. You see the sun is shining quite brightly. And uh, that's actually more power than these batteries can absorb. Even in the winter, with the short amount of days, these batteries are almost constantly bubbling hydrogen gas out of them. You see that? They're almost constantly boiling hydrogen and oxygen gas out of them, because basically I have electrolysis going on inside the battery cells when I have too much power going to the batteries. Now, 
I was going to use electrolysis to separate the heavy water out anyway. So this is going to give me a big head start. I'm going to use the water that's inside the batteries, and I'm going to distill the acid out, or perhaps I'll even do my electrolytic cell with acid. But either way, this is going to be a great source of water because every six months we have to add water to the batteries to make up for the water that gets lost due to the electrolysis. Uh, six to eight gallons every time we do that. Which means that uh, after about the five years that these batteries are old, the deuterium content of them is probably three to four times more what the natural level would be, which gives me a great head start. I'll have to electrolyze down much less material. And also, we got extra power coming in. I may as well use that for the electrolysis. So basically, it's going to be a free process. Uh, this came from a hydrogen torch I was building. kind of blew up. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that. Alright, so uh, this is what I've come up with. See, I've got a couple of lead rods, or lead bolts, that I made. Threaded some nuts on there so I could stay in the lid of this jar. Inside this jar I have the sulfuric acid out of the batteries. Uh, don't worry, I've replaced the acid in the batteries with some new stuff. of the same uh, specific gravity of what I took out. Everything should be equal. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to this uh, battery charger. We're going to see how much gas it produces. Okay. Ooh, it's drawing a lot of current. <laughs> Alright, look at that. Lots of bubbles. Here, let's take this hose here. So I set it up so I can take the uh, gas off of it and use it for things. Let's go ahead and put it in the water, see how much gas we're getting. That's not bad. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Oh yeah. Okay, and... It hurt. Oof. <laughs> this uh, tray that I got here is both to catch the acid in case the jar breaks, and also to cool it. I might throw some snow in there, keep it cool. Although the reaction does happen faster when it's hot. I may not want it hot. Uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is just a test right now to see how fast the water gets destroyed. Looks like it's going to be well, probably about several grams an hour. So it's going to take over a month to electrolyze this down, at least at this rate. I don't think I want to hook up any more power to this. And of course I'm going to hook this up in line to the system, probably with a s voltage switch so it turns on when the power gets up to a certain level. <laughs> Although of course that's after I'm done playing with this gas. Oh man, it's going to be hydroxyl gas, it'll be very explosive. And I know how bad that is, I also know how fun it is. As long as I'm safe and don't try to light it here, it will be good. Well, I'm sorry guys, but I think I'm going to have to split this uh, video up into two parts because this is going to take a long time to electrolyze down and I'm sure you guys want to see a video right now. So uh, I'm going to put a link probably right over here uh, to the next video once I get it uploaded. If you're watching before that, well I guess you're going to have to wait just like I am. So I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>